Hello and welcome. My name's Chris. I'm an Australian GP and today we are going to tackle the absolute cornerstone of medicine, which is the clinical handover. Whether you are a doctor, a nurse, a physio, an OT or anyone in the health space, having a good handover technique is absolutely paramount to having good relations with your colleagues, again, whether within the same field or amongst the health spectrum, and also with your patients too. I know in medical school, students are told how to do handover, but it's a little bit different when you're actually out and working and using the handover regularly. So I'm just gonna take you through a handover today using the good old ice bar. Quick interjection, in case I didn't say it before, I actually mean isobar, the I-S-O-B-A-R. I think I said ISBA, which misses out the O. Anyway, back to our normal scheduling. So I-S-B-A-R, I for introduction, S for situation, B for background, A for assessment, and R for recommendation. So I, identification. Who are you? What's your role? And who are you trying to get in touch with? So an example might be, hi, my name's Dr. Chris. I'm calling from ABC Hospital. Am I talking to the obstetric registrar on call? And they go, yes, or no, actually, you're talking to neurology or whomever. So I've identified myself, who I'm from, and who I'm talking to. S is situation. What's the purpose of this call? At this point, I usually find it super helpful to actually consent to hand over at this point. There's no point starting to rattle off stuff and get really flustered and think you're in a good group for the person on the end of the phone to go, whoa, 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 I'm actually in the middle of a met call. I'm finishing up a, a procedure. My hand's actually halfway through someone's abdominal cavity. Can this wait? And then you go, oh, uh, yeah, oh, sorry. It's really awkward. I've been there myself. So. <laughs> Essentially, what I'll say is, excellent, do you have time now for a quick handover or to give advice about a patient? If they say yes, obviously you go ahead. If they say no, then you kind of say, okay, well, it's urgent or it's not urgent, or is it possible for you to call me back? Or when can I call you back? And you have that discussion. Because remember, at the end of the day, we're all people and we're all busy. I don't think there's anyone in healthcare who's not busy, especially right now. Once you've done this, it's good to give the person at the end of the line a little bit of information about what this call is going to be. So, the situation. <laughs> so, for example, if you're an ED, you might say something along the lines of, I'm calling about Mr. ABC, a 50-year-old who presented a couple of hours ago with central chest pain, who we suspect might be having an acute heart attack or acute myocardial infarct if you were doing a proper handover. Next up is O for observations. This is where you let the person on the other end of the phone know the condition of the person you're calling about. How urgent is this? Are they currently dying? Are they not? Are they stable? So in the context of, say, the emergency about the query heart attack, it might be, Mr. ABC's heart rate's currently stable at 98 beats per minute. His blood pressure is stable at, I don't know, 150 or 90. And his pain is well tolerated after we've given him morphine. So a very, you know, quick snapshot. And just mind you, I'm making this up on the fly, so <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping that no one's sitting there going, oh, clinically, that won't make sense, because, you know, I'm just, I'm giving you an example, please, please, please be aware of that. Next up is B for background. What is this on the background of? Is this someone who you expected to have this event? Is it not? What other comorbidities does this person have that the receiving person on the phone needs to be aware about? So back in the context of our 50-year-old having a heart attack, you know, this is on a background of type 2 diabetes that's poorly controlled or well controlled or whatever, known hypertension currently on ramipril, I don't know, insert drug here, and a 20 pack year history of smoking. So that lets the person on the end of the line say, yeah, look, it probably is a heart attack. This is probably something that was inevitable to happen or, you know, we've got some risk factors we can modify because it helps with future planning too. And don't forget, things related to the condition are not the only things that are important. So don't forget things like allergies, who they live with. So if they live independently, if they're in a nursing home, it does change things a little bit. Then there's A for assessment. And sometimes this is covered further up because a handover is not always linear. It's not always, hi, this is me, this is the situation, here are the obs, this is the background, this is how I assess them, here's the recommendation. Sometimes it's a bit more flippant. It might be, you know, I've got so-and-so, we think they're having this, we've done this already, this is on a background of this, this is what I'm hoping you do, do you have any questions? So it's not always gonna flow. But in the assessment, I kind of covered it already when I was doing the OBS on this gentleman, but you know, he's currently stable on blah, 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 blah. So give the person on the end of the phone an idea of the stability, 
are they going? You know, what to expect essentially. And then R is for request. Why are you making this phone call? And what would you like to happen? So again, back to our heart patient example, which is really, really uh, choppy at this point, I apologize. But I'm hoping that he can be admitted for further workup and further management of his acute heart attack. So, you know, nice and simple, straight to the point. There's no need to fluff around and say, I really want you to, oh, if you think it's relevant, to do an echo in this. Like, when you're handing over, you're handing over to someone who's experienced in that field, more than likely. So they'll, they'll know. There's no need to be fluffy about it, just I'm handing over for further investigation or management or whatever it is. Now, mind you, <laughs> very rarely will you be able to do a handover as a monologue. More often than not, there's the... Hello? Hi, my name's Dr. Chris. I'm calling from the emergency department. Is this cardiology? Yep, what's up? Now good time. I have a patient that I'm hoping that you'll admit. Go for it. I've got Mr. ABC. He's a 50 year old who's presented with some chest pain that we think might be having a heart attack. Did he have ST elevation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. On his ECG he had good ST elevation, leads 2, 3 and AVF. So we're thinking anterior MI. Came in, like I said, with chest pain. It's currently stable with blood pressures of blah, blah, blah. Um, we've given him aspirin, GTN and morphine. Oh, this is on a background of him being a smoker. Significant smoking. Yeah, 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 50 pack year history. Uh-huh, is he also diabetic? Yep, yep, so Mr. ABC is diabetic with hypertension, currently managed on metformin and ramipril. Is this his first heart attack? The first one that we know of, right? How's he going at the moment? Yeah, he's all right. Pain's, pain's managed quite well with the morphine. He's settled down, odds are all okay. All right, um, Right, and have you organized any tests? Uh, yep, we've done the chest x-ray and the ECG. He's on telemetry at the moment. We're gonna organize an echo. Don't worry about that, we'll do it on the ward. Um, anything else? Uh, no, I think I think that's it. Are you able to come down and see him or do you want us to directly admit him or? Yeah, I'll, I'll come down and I'll, I'll see him. Um, yeah, and I'll meet him from there. I'll just have a chat to my boss beforehand, see if I need to do anything else. Well, oh, thanks for that. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> my bad acting aside, and um, I've never been a cardiology range, so I'm really sorry if there's anyone in cardiology watching that going, oh my God, Chris, what the hell was that? Anyway, as you can see, it's usually, it's a conversation and sometimes you miss bits. Sometimes the person on the end of the phone will be more interested in certain answers than you're interested in giving. Um, but at the end of the day, we're two people working for our patients to try and get them the best outcome. So handovers, they can be scary. Um, the type of handover you give will vary as well depending on the situation. If this was an emergency, I wouldn't have fluffed around. It would have been, hi, it's Chris from the ED. Is this cardiology? Fantastic, I've got a patient who's having an acute MI that we can't get stable. Are you able to come down? Not really mention the age or anything like that, which probably should, but it kind of gives that, yep. Yep, okay, um, tell me more. Yep, so they're a 50 year old, blah, 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 blah. So it kind of gives you that sense of urgency. So not every handover is the same. Also, if you're doing a ward handover, so the very beginning of the day, it might be on the list. Yep, so in bed one, we've got Mr. ABC. He was the one admitted with chest pain. He was all right overnight. We've kept him on his warfarin, whatever it may be. You get the gist, so there's no like, so, the, so sometimes there's assumed knowledge as well. So handovers will vary a lot depending who you're talking to, what the situation is, and what you're intending to get out of them. But that's the general gist. Who are you? What are you hoping to get from it? What's the current situation? Any pertinent background information? Any pertinent assessment information? And just reiterating what you're wanting out of the consult. It sounds easy. It's a real learnt skill. And even now as a consultant, I can't say that I'm 100% good at handovers. <laughs> I'm still learning too. So there you have it. If you have any questions, let me know. If you have any video requests, do let me know. I'm really open to suggestions. I hope that if you are a new intern, you're taking care of yourselves and that you're doing okay. The first few weeks, if not months, are just crazy. It's a blur. It can be scary and exciting and exhilarating and just overwhelming. So look after yourselves. Until next time though guys, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you in a video very soon. Bye.